Well, it's a nice August day and the skies above southern England are clear and quiet and I can just sit here and watch the clouds go by. But 70 years ago, it would have been a very different story. The RAF were in the skies above southern England fighting against the German Air Force in what would be one of the decisive battles of the Second World War. I'm Annie and I'll be finding out all about the Battle of Britain in the next two editions of Young Eagles. Now, if you're my age, 70 years ago seemed an incredibly long time back in the past, but we've probably seen stories about the Battle of Britain in the newspapers and on TV. But why is it so important? And what does it mean to us today? Well, 2010 is the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Britain and in the next two shows we'll be looking back at the events of the summer of 1940 and I'll be chatting to someone who was my age at the time of the Battle of Britain to find out what life was like. And we'll be exploring Middlewall of Airfield which was home to a Spitfire squadron during the battle. But first, let's look at some old film to find out what was actually going on in Europe in the summer of 1940. The shadow of the conquering German armies covered Western Europe. The self-styled master race was riding high. Now Adolf Hitler stood just as Napoleon had stood more than a hundred years before and looked across the English Channel to the one fighting obstacle that stood between him and world domination. The chalk cliffs of Britain rose sheer and white out of the choppy waters. And beyond, a little island, smaller than the state of Wyoming. Crush that little island and its stubborn people, and the way was open for world conquest. The fall of Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Denmark, Norway, Holland, Belgium, France had given him more than 100 million slaves to work for him or starve. The preliminaries were over. It was time for the main event, the Battle of Britain. Hitler and his generals feverishly drafted their plans for the conquest of Britain. Every detail must be anticipated. A slip now might wreck the whole timetable of world conquest. See for yourselves how simple the whole operation was to be. Look. German plan for invasion of England. Phase one. Knock out the Royal Air Force and its bases. Get control of the air and the sea lanes across the channel. Follow the Blitz plan that had wiped out Poland, the Low Countries, and France. Destroy communication and transport lines. Above all, get command of the air. Phase two. Pulverize the coastline with dive bombers. Drop parachute troops to take over the airfields and establish beachheads. Phase three, actual invasion. Pour the German panzer divisions across in high speed barges under an umbrella protecting fighter planes. Then send spearheads of armed might to divide, surround, destroy all opposition. That's all there was to it. Well, it sounds like this was quite a scary time to be living in southern England. And I've met up with someone who was there at the time. It's my gran. In the summer of 1940, you are about my age. Were you aware of that the Germans were going to invade the UK? No. Don't forget that in those days there was no television. The radio was, it was just one of those things that stood in the corner. And no, nobody at that age read newspapers, so we didn't know. The only way that we could get any information from the war was going to the cinema. We used to watch newsreels on the cinema. But I mean, that sometimes they could be ages old. We, and, but that was the only way that we knew anything about it. So you had to remain in England for the summer of 1940, but where were you living? I lived near Slough Trading Estate, which is a very, very big estate where they made lots of ammunition and stuff. 
but I was farmed out basically. I was sent to an aunt that had a farm out in the country and I lived out there with them for quite a while. What sort of things did you do on the farm over the summer? Oh, all sorts of things. Nothing was ever ever wasted. We used, we used to go out and pick up all the, all the fallen apples and we used to help feed the pigs, all sorts of, anything that wanted doing. But no, no hard work. It was just helping out on the farm. The Germans were blockading a lot of the ships that were coming into the UK carrying goods. Was there a food shortage? Yes. Yes, there was. Everything was on ration. You, you only got m own small amounts of stuff all the week. But nothing was ever wasted. If a food, food was put in front of you, you ate it, whether you liked it or not. There was absolutely no waste whatsoever. Later in the summer, there was quite a few bombing raids in London. Were you caught up with any of them? Well, as I said, I lived near, near Slough Trading Estate. And we did have one, one session where a bomber came over and it was terrifying. The, the bombs came down and exploded. We all had to rush off because there was all big air raid shelters and we all had to rush off and make sure we got in, inside. Did people used to have their own air raid shelters at home? Mm, yes. We, we were issued with an Anderson shelter, which is one that you dig in the garden. So you, you big, a big pit in the garden, make sure that it's well down in the soil and then put all the soil that we've taken out over the top of it and make, you know, make it all so that it's, all you can see of it basically is the front. We used to have to sleep in the shelters sometimes because we had a, a railway line just along the side of the house and there used to be an anti-aircraft gun running up and down this railway line. And though we were made sure that we were in the shelter before the gun started firing because we could have as much damage from the gun as we could from bombs. So it was one, one thing after another. So although it was hard for people like my grand to know what was going on in the early days of the summer, plans were being made to fight the potential invasion. To lead them, the people had chosen Winston Churchill as their Prime Minister. And he spoke the words in every British heart when he said, We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on beaches, landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on the hills, we shall never surrender. This was Britain in its darkest hour. The people knew they were in for the worst the Nazi mind could invent, yet they didn't panic or run away. They patrolled and waited. They drilled and waited. They worked and waited. Waited for the terror they knew was coming. Then it came. That's the sound that became part of the life of every man, woman and child in Britain. August 8th, 1940, and the battle for Britain is on. 30 enemy aircraft over the channel, flying due west. Here comes the Luftwaffe in dozens of flights, hundreds of planes, bombers, fighters, dive bombers, across that 21 miles of channel, that eight short minutes of water. German fighters waited overhead for the defending planes of the Royal Air Force, the RAF, to appear. They didn't have long to wait. Britain special, we'll be looking at Middlewall of Airfield's role as a Spitfire base, and I'll be finding out just why the Battle of Britain was so important. In the Second World War, the Battle of Britain was the most significant um, of those, those battles. Just as important as 1066, the Battle of Hastings, or 1588 and the, and the Armada. 